Hello, Divi Nation. It's Steve Lee, and I'm here to talk to you today about GT Metrics. In particular, a lot of the changes that they've made in the past day or two that you may or may not have noticed. So uh, if you haven't lately, go ahead and run the, the latest websites that you've built through GT Metrics, and you might find that a lot of the numbers uh, and a lot of the metrics have changed quite a bit. Uh, that's been the case with us here, and we're having to do a little bit of damage control. No, you're not alone, and, uh, and, and all of us are in this together. So in particular, a lot of questions that I've been seeing online are about this top issue of use explicit width and height on image elements. Uh, more specifically, how in the heck do you fix it? Now, I've got set up here a nice single variable test uh, which makes it really easy to pin down what this issue is and what it's about and, and the best way to go about it. Uh, I've got a website here on our uh, WP Engine development server, which by the way, WP Engine is great. They give us three server environments to build on and they're uh, wicked fast and safe. So they've got, uh, we've got trifuriumdev.wpengine.com and then the production site of trifurium.com. Same exact sites on both of them. The only thing that we've changed here between the two is how we're addressing this right here. Use explicit width and height on image elements. So let's hop right into to what we're doing here, what we did to fix that and get these... Uh, these these grading reports remedied. Now, at the root of the issue is this thing here called cumulative layout shift, and uh, you can you can click on this and read more. But essentially, what it's talking about is if this web page, uh, let's go down to this section here because this is the one we're going to be working on. Uh, say this section got loaded and this image weren't accounted for; it it wasn't loaded yet the container would be a little bit smaller until the image popped up and then the entire page would shift. Now, if you've ever looked up recipes online, that's like a, that's a prime example of what cumulative layout shift is. Recipe websites typically have a ton of images and a ton of text and a ton of ads. And you could be looking at one section of the site and then boom, something else loads and it shifts the entire screen on you. And that becomes incredibly frustrating for the user or for the user experience. And that's what we're talking about here. Not a big deal on, uh, on a tiny website like this with a, you know, a tiny image. You start adding in a lot of bigger images and that compounds pretty quickly. So on this site, uh, on this page here, we've got a really simple page. It's a single page website. These menu items at the top are just anchor links that take us further down the page. There aren't any additional pages on this site. We've got uh, images. We've got a video embedded here. We've got a, uh, this is a HubSpot form that is, um, that's piped in and, uh, or embedded in. And I've used the theme builder to build the header and the footer. All simple stuff, really straightforward. The only thing we've changed is between these two scores is how we're doing these images. So let's look at, uh, I'm on Google Chrome here. I'm going to go down to this image. This is one of the four that's listed here on this report. This is a header image. These two are in the footer. And then this is the one here that I'm looking at. If we right click on this and inspect that element, we can see the the size of that image, 148 by 110, but on its attributes, we can see it's alt text. We can see the height is set to auto and the width to auto. Now, let me save you some time here. It might seem intuitive to just go into the theme builder, go into the design tab and the sizing options and change this image to be, um, these dimensions 148 by 110 i promise you if you do that this is still going to say height auto and width auto and you're still going to get the same problem if you run the um the lighthouse report you can do that in your um, chrome development tools doesn't cost you anything you can do it as much as you want or on gt metrics they'll eventually eventually limit you if you keep doing that too much 
it's going to give you the same error. Use explicit with and height on image elements because you haven't given it, you haven't given this image an exact uh, dimension yet to use. So what we're doing to fix that is I'm going to go into the uh, production site here, go into the visual builder, and let's talk about this image down here on the call to action because um, it's not built in the theme builder. We're also going to go into the theme builder and talk about how to do uh, images in there. It's exactly the same, uh, but uh, it's something that you might want to see if you're using theme builder. So typically this is a section text module. I've got a code module over here for the, um, oh, I might've duplicated that. We'll just discard those changes, but um, this is for the HubSpot form. This would typically be an image module here. Sometimes people do a um, go into the advanced tab and custom CSS and make this a, a before pseudo element to add that icon. But uh, for me, this was an image module, and that's what was making this pop up as uh, you know this violation, we'll call it on GT metrics. To fix that, we're making this a code module. And we're going to pipe this in as an HTML image element. Now, this is something that uh, I, I've been designing websites since about 2007, 2008. This is how websites used to be built, is you used to have um, a div, and then you would call for the image. You would use some CSS to style and position things. And then we got away from that for some reason. I, I'm not quite sure why. I guess technology got the best of us and now we've got these uh, visual builders and they tend to be code heavy and maybe miss a few things. By doing this, by using a code module, it's the pretty much the most straightforward way that you can make this image pop up without too much extra baggage. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to include this down in the description as a um, kind of a template that you can use. You're going to have to change the URL of this image. Uh, let's go through and uh, you can find that right here in the media library. This particular one is this. So right down here on file URL, you would just copy that. You can click the copy URL button and that's what you're going to have to pop into uh, into here between the quotes. And then you're also going to have to change the width and the height. So to find that, the your best bet is to go out to the, the live website and see what it's being displayed as. WordPress and uh, Divi use source set, so it's gonna show you what that's displaying as on your big desktop display. And you can uh, put those numbers in. I should probably do it here on the uh, development site because I haven't changed it yet. So you can see here it's calling up the source set 148 by 110. Those are the dimensions that you're going to want to put into that code module to to remedy this error. So again, I've got that down in the in the in the description below. <clears throat> the alt text I've left this blank. This is going to be a, a judgment call on on your side. Best practice if the image that you're using is purely decorative, it doesn't have any purpose. It's not a link. It doesn't have text in it. Leave alt text blank. It doesn't matter what you know. Any kind of audit software that you use says it's going to report that it's blank, but it's for a good reason. If someone's using a screen reader, this is where they get that that description from from the screen reader. So if this were a link to our contact page, you can put that you can put that in if you want that read to them, but this isn't a link to our contact page. So it's, it's just an image of a paper airplane. So you wouldn't put in, you know, paper airplane here. You wouldn't put in any kind of branding. Uh, you want to make this, you know, as accessible as possible. So keep that blank if it's decorative, if it has a purpose, put in its purpose or description as descriptive as you can. And uh, that's how all text is used. So. I'm going to uh, X out of here just because this has all been done already. And I'm going to go into the uh, the theme builder so you can see what that looks like there. I'll head into the footer just because that's got a little more action in it. 
this is just a uh, it's a section four column row it's got a couple what would have been images here I would typically have used images but uh, you know now it's becoming an uh, a lighthouse issue and a GT metrics issue these are code modules now and I'm just calling for that image by its URL and I'm putting in its width and its height that's about it if it's got you know you could put you could put here if you wanted to uh, Trifurium logo uh, that that wouldn't hurt anything save things up exit out and you can see what the difference is between uh, between these two tests. You can dig in more and get into the performance of things and uh, if you want to. Now you you might notice here I've done one little thing different which uh, was a bit of an accident but it plays more into my favor actually. This first test here on the development server was ran on uh, in San Antonio, Texas. This one here was ran in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, this just helps me out because our WP Engine's uh, primary server is in the United States. So the fact that this is ran in Vancouver and it's got better scores actually helps us out. Uh, to boot, I, I haven't even enabled the CDN yet on this production server yet. That's something uh, we just launched this site today. So that's something I'm going to be doing in the next day, enabling the CDN and making sure that... Um, all of the the users get the best experience possible for for this particular page and if you're doing any kind of reporting to your customers or you think that they look this up because they they certainly could um, you're you're gonna have a you know a, a good display here of the the work that you've given so let's wrap this up guys it's been uh, more than 12 minutes here I'm gonna include the um, the the HTML code that you need to put in your code module below and I'm also going to include uh, a shameless link for WP Engine it's going to save you uh, I forget what it is maybe three or four months on uh, on hosting with them for opening a startup plan and uh, it's an affiliate link it helps you it helps me it's absolutely a win-win they have the best hosting they have server-side security and server-side caching so that you can avoid all of the plugins. Let me show you our production site here. There is exactly one plugin here called Swift Performance, um, which I use just to lower the number of uh, you know requests from the server. And that's it. The the less plugins, the less WP fastest cache and WP smush and all that junk that people load on their website. It it is absolutely a detriment and you want to have the least amount of plugins possible and the 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 least amount of uh, barriers to your user your users having the best experience possible and that's how you do it build a nice clean coded website less plugins nice fast hosting and that's what you get so that's all for the night Thank you guys for uh, your time and your patience in checking this uh, solution out. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments. Feel free to pop into uh, Facebook if you're on Facebook. I run the Divi CSS Share Facebook page, and uh, I'm also really uh, heavily involved on the Divi Web Designers page, which is run by Josh Hall. He's got some great courses on his website. I also encourage you to check them out if you're just starting out and, uh, and getting into things. It's going to set you up on a, a path to elevate your game and uh, take your web designs to the next level. Thanks and have a great night. Bye-bye.